a circuit breaker, but not just any old circuit breaker because an ordinary circuit breaker would look like this. And I've looked at this type before. So here is the much smaller standard circuit breaker. This one is an RCBO made by MK uh, and called Sentry. The RCBO stand basically stands for residual, sur residual current breaker with overload protection or overcurrent protection. And what that means is that it's an RCD device or GFCI or GFI device that can detect current leakage, but it also acts as a standard breaker. And this one has a trip characteristic of B and it's rated for 32 amps. The trip characteristic of B relates to the magnetic trip mechanism inside and it means that it's going to trip instantly at somewhere between three to five times the rated current, which sounds a lot, but in the event of a fault, that is typical set of currents. So this one actually has a couple of wires going into it uh, because... It has to sense the current going out and coming back again to be able to detect leakage. So it goes onto the bus bar um, here, and that provides a live, but then it goes, it's got a couple of wires going to the neutral bus bar and also the earth bus bar so it can carry out extra sensing with this earth sensing wire. And then your circuit itself actually connects to these two terminals here. Worth mentioning, and this is nice, it's one of the few manufacturers that seem to do this that they've actually put, MK have actually put the little flag here that when you tighten it up, the little flag comes up, which means that it's much harder to actually sit this over a circuit, uh, over a bus bar in a distribution board uh, on the wrong side of the clamp, which uh, is a common problem. Anyway, this one is faulty. It was sent in by Thomas Nagy. Thomas Nagy has a YouTube channel. Um, I've mentioned it before. It's a very good channel. It follows... A British electrician working in London doing electrical work. And he really does, he makes a lot of uh, effort with the filming of it. So he catches a good taste of that sort of style of uh, work. I should put a link down below. So I've put these connections in. There's the blue neutral. I've used a red just because it's what I had for the live. And I'm going to close this down. And this is faulty, but to be honest, I can see the fault already. It trips instantly. Uh, it will probably reset now, and it has. And when I press this button, it'll trip. The reason it tripped instantly, the reason Thomas probably had it tripping continuously, is that when this uh, arrived, the trip button was jammed in. And it's not a mechanical thing. It's not like it's some, inter some interlock to the mechanism. All that does is it presses a contact. So if that's jammed in and you try to reset it, it will just trip instantly like that. It won't latch at all because it is doing its job. It's detecting that uh, button is pressed in and it's tripping. Now that I've pulled that out, it will latch. It seems to be just a manufacturing tolerance. Okay, let's unplug it. Let's open the thing up. Let's explore why that button was jamming. I don't think it's dust or dirt because uh, when you ping it, it does eventually come out, uh, but I think it's actually a rag of plastic around this. There is a slightly rough plastic finish around that, and I think that's what's jamming it, so it might be common. So if you have one of these circuit breakers and it just it won't set, it just keeps tripping instantly, uh, check this little button is poking out, because it should poke out. Right, now I'm going to drill this open, so just bear with me. I'm just going to go and grab the drill and drill this open. The rivets are all out and the circuit breaker is now going to split into lots of random pieces when I try opening it, because they always do. They've got quite a complex mechanism in here and everything will just ping apart. Let's get the screwdriver in and prise this apart. Let's uh, take you down so uh, you can get a little bit of a closer look. Oh, yeah, it's going to ping apart. It's going to ping apart. Ugh. Well, that's not bad. It's more or less stayed put. The arc shoot is there. The little plunger mechanism's there. The mechanism that trips is about to ping apart. Uh, there's the circuitry that controls it. That's interesting. Right, so it's a typical circuit breaker arrangement, as you'd pretty much expect. It has an arrangement of, let's see, this would go in like that. And this little thing, that's interesting. I wonder what that's for arc quenching guide that would actually go in there that's a little copper bit right at the back of this i wonder if it's to somehow uh break the arc 
Oh, this is a uh, this has been pitting. I wonder if that's during the test or while Thomas was actually having a problem getting it to reset. Because if it wasn't reset, it would be making it and breaking continually when people tried resetting it. Oh, well, that's interesting. And little ceramic bits of it, or is it ceramic or is it just heat resistant plastic? I shall I shall tooth it. It feels like plastic. It's probably some toxic plastic. It's a uh, part of the arc guide. When this breaks, uh, the circuit, when the little contact opens, and you can see the contact down there. Uh, when it opens uh, to break the arc, it tends to ride up by the nature of the how arcs travel, ride up the copper and then get quenched in these uh, quenching plates. This stack of plates that are just, they're all isolated from each other and they're designed to cool that arc and quench it. Uh, there is a little port uh, for letting the heat out at the back here. Rightio, uh, the bit we're interested in though, here is the sense coil that detects the sudden overload. That's the bit that in the, if it was a more, a less sensitive circuit breaker, this would be heavier, a small number of heavier turns. Uh, there is the little coil that trip, trips the mechanism when it trips on leakage current detection. I'm guessing that this looks like a little solenoid coil. There is the plunger, because this is basically a stacked system. Here's a plunger that goes down that's got a decent spring in it when it detects a high current overload by this a solenoid effect. There's a little lower power coil for the uh, the leakage current sensing. And then the final trip is this thermal plate here, this little thermal bimetallic strip. Carries the full current uh, to the contact and if it gets too hot, it bends up to the point that it trips the mechanism out. Interesting. A uh, novel layout inside. It's different from the normal one. Usually that thermal one is up at the top, if I remember correctly. On other circuit breakers, I could be wrong. Uh, the sensing of leakage is this here. It is based on a chip. That'll be interesting. I think I, I feel the need to go and look up the data on that chip. Right, tell you what, I will look up the data on that chip. And this is where it stops. 39k. Trip style, where's the symbol? It's an AC circuit breaker, or RCD. It's designed to, it's a fairly simple one. What is that? Oh, that's the test contact. There's a very distinct lip here. It's not been cleaned off. If at the factory they'd just taken the knife and slit that round, but they don't. It's a mass production facility. So I guess it just jams. What the fuck are these? Okay.
VG54123. VG54123. That makes a refreshing change. There was actually a data sheet for that chip. So it's a dedicated RCD detection chip. And to give you an idea of how the RCD detection works, residual current device or GFI, GFCI, if you have a toroidal core and you've got two wires going into that toroidal core, so there's the two wires going into it, passing through live and neutral or feed and return. And they go through that core. And I'll just finish drawing the core here. So that's the supply, and this is the load. Then the current flowing in here induces a magnetic field in one direction in this core, but the current flowing back out the load induces a magnetic field in the other direction. They cancel each other out. There is a sense coil just wrapped around this that then picks up any imbalance and and the imbalance occurs if current's actually flowing in, but it's actually finding its way to ground through some, well, you basically, or some faulty appliance. And because not all the currents come back through, it does induce that slight magnetic field, picks it up in the sense coil, and then it triggers the circuitry. And the circuitry is all about filtering and the detecting the, well, deriving its power supply, um, using a reference voltage to an amplifier and then a trigger circuit. And the trigger circuit then fires a thyristor, I'm guessing. Could be wrong. That might be what these are. This is not following the standard circuit diagram here. This is extra features, notably involving this little white sense wire, which I believe is to detect when there's a neutral anomaly. If the neutral fails, it can uh, either trip the circuit breaker instantly, well, I should hope it would trip it just instantly, if it detected the neutral uh, connection had failed. But uh, interestingly, it triggers that thyristor, which then shunts out the supply. And I'm guessing then that the, um, the sense coil, which isn't the trigger coil, is that shown in here? I'm not immediately spotting the trigger coil. But uh, the thyristor latches and it fires the trigger coil, which in this instance is this little thing down here. And that fires the plunger out and trips the circuit breaker. So there's three ways the circuit breaker can trip. Uh, high current overload causing a magnetic trip of this plunger here. The uh, RCD detecting uh, leakage current and causing this plunger to trip out. And then the bimetallic strip in here that can push that up and cause the mechanism to trip as well. Interesting thing. Rather a congested little circuit board, though. I'll maybe have to spend a bit more time reverse engineering that. Maybe do that later. Um, it has metal oxide varistors on it, but with no thermal protection. One that appears between live and neutral, I think, and one between neutral and earth. Just a multiple protection of circuitry, I'm guessing. Uh, but interesting little device. Oh, the reason it failed in the first place, the reason the button jammed in is because the uh, plastic surround where that button poked out has a very obvious rag on the edge there. It's something that, you know, I guess they just didn't clean that rag off at the factory or maybe the mould was just leaving a bit of flash in the edge. And that's uh, what's ultimately caused that button to jam and basically rendered this whole thing void. But there we go. Interesting. So I'd like to thank Thomas again for sending that. I will provide a link to his uh, channel. I'll just put it up there again. And uh, yeah, that was quite interesting to take to bits. Um, I shall try and get some of the stuff off the circuit board, though. I want to take a closer look at that and see how if I can work out what other features they've been introducing into that. But there we go. Yeah, well worth taking to bits.